Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Before we get started, please take the time to subscribe, then click on the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is episode 122 and welcome to the show. Love having you here. Uh, <laughs> I gotta get a kick out of feedback we get. Uh, I finally read some reviews in a place I didn't normally look, which is on Podcast Addict. And uh, we definitely got some folks that have been kind of stirred up a little bit. And then there's out of the blue would be like Rob's down you know, uh, telling it how it is and how real it is. And I appreciate that. Uh, I got a kick out of some comments I heard about. I did a show, I think, the other day about uh, women's safety. I think I talked about it a little bit. And that was really done out of love, out of respect and concern. And, uh, of course, you get um, a person or a uh, or a female that was thinking otherwise, uh, but I, I guess I'm kind of old school. I uh, I think women can do anything because I have a daughter who basically can do almost anything. Uh, at the same time, I still like to put them on a pedestal, give them respect, open doors for them, respect them, and I think that's always a good thing as far as gentlemen should do for women to continue to respect women but also open up the doors to make sure that they can do everything we do and try to keep things as uh, equal as possible but at the same time having that built-in respect that your parents taught you about treating women and uh, maybe our roles a little bit uh, I think is a good thing and you know when you hear of abuse and things like that I always feel that those are people that didn't learn respect for women. And uh, so I guess that's where I'm coming from. And so fair enough, uh, uh, other folks or feminists, I guess would say, is uh, those days are gone and we shouldn't think like that anymore. But I think that's also causing things to go south too because we aren't still giving our women that or spouses and keeping them on a pedestal and respecting them. And I'll just kind of leave it at that. But I need to move on to my main subject. Well, here we go, guys. I just, um, I just couldn't help. I, I couldn't help but laugh. It just cracked me up. Um, so I put in the description below a link to a video that uh, CheapRVLiving.com did. And it started out, I thought, well, okay, I'm going to listen to one of his things. And, and you know, and because I do have, and you've heard on this show, I think there's great situations for people to go nomad, especially on fixed income and disability and stuff like that, where it's just not making enough money to make ends meet, live in an you know, apartment or rent a house or buy a house. It just makes sense. And, and it like, there's a great way to live based off your resources so I want to make sure I put that out there so I thought well I'll, I'll see what Mr. Wells is uh, talking about this time so he sits in front of the camera and he right off the bat says well uh, I can't believe how many people listen to my show and all this stuff I am radical and if I had my way everybody would live in a van and I believe that I, I totally do and so uh, his talk started out like yeah, it's kind of nice, not bad. And, uh, you know, you know how I'm kind of like, all right, all these nomads are always trying to find a way for you to pay for their lifestyle. And I'm going, this is pretty nice. He's doing a good talk. And then he starts talking about, and I, you can find out there's some really good podcasts out there and stuff to listen to. And then 
it switches over to a commercial for Audible. <laughs> it's like I was, I was, I was there. I was like, cool. This was pretty good video, and there it is again, e begging, right off the bat. Well, not right off the bat. He led us into it, and it's like people. Now I need you to make, uh, know something for sure. There is ways to trace to find out how well people are doing on YouTube and how much money they're making and stuff like that. I can tell you right now, just off of YouTube, he makes the salary of a well-paid aerospace worker <laughs> uh, just from YouTube. This guy's not hurting. So, uh, um, so just keep that in mind. And to keep that kind of rolling, you got to keep doing the shows that he does and stuff. Now, I admit he does great interviews with people that are already nomads out there, whether they're in vans or trailers or what, um, and they're pretty good, but I still think it's almost like pushing a cult. You say, oh, that's kind of radical, Rob, but think about it. How many of the old cults, cults out there, which some have ended up in terrible stories, and uh, I'm aware of the one in Oregon uh, really well because I'm from Bend, Oregon. But th there's also some very uh, terrible ones where everybody committed suicides. And I'm not saying that's going to happen here, no. <laughs> but what it came down to is, join me. Join me. Come out here in this lifestyle. I want everybody to do it. And I want you to give up everything. Get rid of all those worldly possessions. Get rid of the stress. Doesn't that ring a bell? I was like, F I mean... If someday, if all the Bob Wells people are running around with sheets on, I'm really getting worried. <laughs> but it's, it, there's almost a pattern to it. And people are you know, always looking for solutions for a better life, and they're not happy doing what they're doing. I truly understand that. But it isn't, sometimes changing your whole lifestyle is not the answer. And that's what a lot of these RV channels are doing. It's like, this is the greatest lifestyle ever. Join us. Get out here. Join the RV freedom. Leave the uh, responsibility and come on out. And and really, in a lot of cases, some people are not happy. It's due to their career or marriage or things like that, schools, whatever. Uh, a radical decision like that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be happy at first you'll go oh i feel so good i've changed things and then a whole new set of issues will will come about and uh pretty soon you may start regretting all the things you've given up and uh and i gotta admit that when we went full timing we uh, first time in 2006 we sold everything out of our house all that stuff and it felt good to get all rid of all that stuff and then at the same time i'm going I had kind of a sickly feeling like I'm not sure if that was a good decision or not. Um, it was okay, and we did all right, and we did hold on to some radical things, you know, not radical things, but main things. So when we did decide to settle down, that we did have some resources. But uh, there was some regret, and there was some, like, maybe I went a little too far. So uh, anyway, so I put a link to uh, Bob Wells' uh, video down below uh, for you guys to see and you and it's good video it starts out wonderful and then it goes into a sales pitch <laughs> and I just like shake my head like I should have known I just knew that where where's the pitch the pitch is coming and uh yeah and I, of course go look at this description it'll be loaded with affiliate links and etc and so yeah and, and of course RV uh Odd Couple just did the same thing. They did a RV Essentials. The reason they do those videos is that I guarantee you, if you go down in the description, everything that they described will have a link. And you'll find that they're Amazon links or something else. and uh, uh, Or affiliate links. And uh, they're doing it because you're interested in the equipment, but they're doing it because they're interested in you buying the product and getting a commission. Guaranteed. Why? Because we do the same thing, but we do it kind of like out of the blue. It isn't part of 
our lifestyle to try to suck money out of you guys. Uh, it's nice when we do get a little bit because we apply it to not only RV stuff, we apply it to Good Talk Radio, uh, our Ranger Rob poopy bags, our all the uh, cooking with Ranger Rob, all these different things we do. We just kind of throw it in the pot, and we appreciate it. And and, and uh, it goes to a lot of things. And we help a lot of other um, businesses uh, advertise their stuff, especially through our radio station and stuff. So we try to do a lot of good things for the community and those folks that are trying to get some uh, extra recognition. And so uh, we either do it through RV Talk Radio, Arizona Talk Radio, Paradigm Chimes, Good Talk Radio. We have tons of stuff. And uh, so all that goes into the kitty to help all those different programs, not just one. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV Refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and G-B-Y-A-Y. And we're back. And I want to do the follow-up uh, message on the show we did before. I was talking about uh, Dan and Jen Nevada. Uh, that's their uh, channel. <clears throat> and they had kind of an invasion and in privacy, you might say, uh, uh, at a boondocking location that they're at. And they did a follow-up uh, uh, video talking about how people responded to their video. And uh, pretty much kind of uh, some said it was crazy. Some people like, let liberal people be liberals, leave them alone. Um, and, of course, his, his reply was, well, that's what we're doing in San Francisco and Los Angeles and see how well that's doing. So uh, I agree with him on that, too. So anyway... Uh, uh, I, one of the theories or one of the decisions that they made from all this is they're going to amp up their security. <laughs> so, yeah, so they're going to invest in possibly security cameras. And uh, I think that was about what, and, oh, and a uh, uh, motion sensor light outside so they can uh, irritate their neighbors. So, uh, yeah, sounds like you may as well, have a house, huh? So, yeah, security. I just, I, I am guessing that in the next few years, because the homeless situation is growing, and there's several causes, and that's sad, and I wish we could fix it, and and our federal programs are not working, the city programs are not working, it really comes down to these people need shelter, and uh, we're just not putting our money in the right place. So uh, they just keep making a bad situation worse, uh, the way they're trying to fix the problem, and they're not actually helping, they're actually making it worse. And so what's going to slowly happen is, think, is you're going to see more and more people utilizing free public land to live on and spend the night on and stuff like that. They have just as much right as anybody else, which is going to probably cause more situations like what Dan and Jen went through. And it's sad, but it's the reality. And so it's kind of something I've been warning against is boondocking. I question security and I question, uh, you know, uh, one of these days we're going to hear about some kind of criminal kind of thing going on in all these different boondocking areas because they figured out the vulnerability of people that are RVers. Uh, just to monitor them a little bit, watch them leave the rig and, 
and uh, off they go and terrorize you. And I just fear, mark my words, I hate to say I might be right, but I think I'll be right. So it's kind of sad. So the next thing I wanted to bring up is this is a, a gentleman and his wife that I've known for quite a while. And uh, we've been out of touch for quite a while, but he also does uh, some graphics work for us on Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Is uh, Three Tails RV. Um, they don't have a website, but they have a, a YouTube channel, which is doing really well, and a Facebook page uh, called Three, the number Three Tails RV. And the reason it's called Three Tails is because they have three dogs. And uh, anyway, the exciting thing for them is they've lived in their RV for quite a while. I've kind of dealt with some hardship, but the news is they're finally going to get a chance to hit the road, which is probably very exciting for them, considering you've been doing a RV do-it-yourself kind of uh, videos for quite a long time. He's really good about making his videos short and sweet and to the point, and they're very helpful videos, and he's done a good job, and because his uh, channel's growing, just shows how much work he has actually done into his channel. Much better than I, I have. <laughs> so, but I'm not traveling. But uh, I urge you to go find him on YouTube, uh, Three Tails RV, and uh, follow him. They're, they'll be worth following because uh, they're uh, they're very excited to get on the road. And I, I, uh, I don't blame them. They've uh, had a tough time at it. And uh, it looks like the cards have been dealt to them where they can actually hit the road now. So... I'm excited for him. I hope everything goes well for him. And I do, uh, I'm looking forward to see how he does his traveling videos. Uh, that'll be quite interesting. So uh, he's very meticulous about how he does his videos. And so it uh, uh, should be a really good channel. So get on board now before they hit the road and kind of grow with them and, and watch them how, as they go. Uh, once again, it's called Three Tails RV. Hey, and time to change the subject again to Sherry and I. And so uh, interesting things have been happening to us. We actually, uh, everybody has their ups and downs in life and stuff like that. And sometimes a change is also something God given that says, hey, it's, I'm going to make a change in your life. And it's typically better. It just sometimes at the time when it happens, you kind of like, this doesn't seem better. But uh, you have to put a little faith in your uh, faith <laughs> and uh, go with it. So what uh, without going into details of our particular discomfort, is uh, we actually may be freed up uh, in a, August to uh, be able to hit the road a little bit with our RV. And so that's exciting for us because one is we're getting ready to bring our RV back from Oregon. And two is uh, it would be really enjoyable to get uh, uh making uh, get back to making some rv videos of adventures and uh, and things we see and uh uh and share that with our our folks and uh, so you know it's not going to be long term uh we'll always uh we're going to keep a base keep our base of course and um do more extended kind of trips and we're looking forward to that because there's some places down uh, more southern than we normally have been in before uh, with the RV uh, that we're kind of looking forward to going to uh, check out. So that's kind of our latest news and it's exciting. Now, the interesting part will be, this is terrible, but our RV, we have not been in it since September of last year and it's sitting up at in Central Oregon. And so I just fear that, uh, you know, RVs just sitting in place are, it's a little scary. It's in a good place and it's, uh, uh, the weather's pretty mild. I mean, winters are kind of cold, but it's all winterized and all that stuff. But I got a feeling that, uh, I, and, and I was surprised last time it was just fine. Uh, but you know, uh, that first couple of days when we get our RV back, start moving around, uh, you know, I get concerned because the wheels haven't been turning. It means the bearings haven't been getting lubricated. And, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> who knows? 
uh, certain things may have seized up or something. Air conditioners are hopefully all working fine. Uh, probably have to start thinking about changing the two six volt batter batteries we have in there. So yeah, I mean, uh, for every cause, there's the effect, right? So we'll see how that goes, and we'll be reporting of the things we found and the, any mistakes that we've made. We hopefully haven't made any, and uh, go from there. But that's kind of our uh, future coming up that's looking forward. And if uh, we don't do more extended kind of stuff, we'll be doing more like Weekend Warrior-ish kind of stuff. Uh, I'd love to find something down south here to do kind of like we did in Anacortes, Washington, where we could keep our RV in a location that's, you know, a ways away that we could turn the RV into a little bit of a vacation home a little bit, uh, but at a, affordably. I mean, you could easily do it if you pay top dollar, but to find a good deal, that's that's what I'm looking for. And uh, getting harder and harder to do because all RV parks are so darn busy nowadays. They're not really interested in deals anymore because they can get full price for everything. And that's the problem with the population of RVers going up and up and up and not seeing a whole lot of new RV parks coming along. So it's just how it is, I guess. But yeah, that's our news and we're kind of excited about that. We know most of you are responsible dog owners and want to keep our parks and recreational areas pristine. Most of us have been stuck with cheap dog waste bags that are inconsistent and cumbersome. That's why we created Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags are larger, deeper, stronger, and leak proof. Most of all, they have handles that make the bag easy to turn inside out and to seal with your dog's business. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags are lemon scented, eco-friendly, and come in sheets and now in rolls. Stop getting stuck with cheap waste bags when you can have a Ranger Rob quality premium dog waste bags. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags are cost effective, they're in Amazon, and you can get free shipping right now. Make picking up dog waste easier and comfortable. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, making dog waste pickup a little easier. Well, we're back, and I uh, just got a chance to, to actually enjoy a video from Nomadic Fanatic. And he happens to be up in uh, Ocean Shores, which is actually the first place we boondocked, which I referred to in the show before this. And uh, uh, sadly, I mean, he's kind of pointing out a few things that have changed, uh, like the Quinault uh, Casino is a place that we used to boondock at, and it was free then. And now it sounds like it's $15 a day, and uh, no matter what, year-round. So times have changed again. Um, I don't know. So I, when people have to pay, maybe they'll take a little better care of the area. That's, uh, um, we did get kind of like a lot of strangers kind of pulling up and stuff when we stayed there in Boondock. But yeah, um, and you know, of course, you got the entertainment of the casino, and plus they got really uh, good deals on breakfasts and stuff like that. So we've always enjoyed Ocean Shores. Uh, I used to own a chain of kite stores, Cutting Edge Kites, and for those of you who might remember that, it was in the 90s, uh, we had a kite store there, so I know Ocean Shores very well. Uh, we also had a kite team called the Cutting Edge Kite Team, which we, you know, kind of what caused us to create the kite stores. We actually had four kite stores at the time. This is in the 90s. And uh, so the one thing I learned about Ocean Shores really quick is when you have a kite store, you got to go there all the time and check inventory and things like that. So uh, during the off season, the only thing I could always remember is wind and sideways rain. <laughs> so it's so easy to think that living on the beach is just a real pleasant experience all the time. But Really, the weather on a beach is, uh, in, at least there, is uh, not so fun. Uh, it's usually foggy, rainy, and windy uh, most of the time. Not some of the time, most of the time. Uh, it's just the summers that have exceptions. And even when it's beautiful inland, you come to ocean shores and it could still be cloudy. And that's one of the things that happened to Sherry and I once when we were full-timing in 2006. We thought we'd spend a month on the Oregon coast. 
And it was in the summer, and it was great weather and the whole works. But we never saw the sunshine at all during that time because if you drove five miles inland, you'd be in blue skies and 80, 90 degrees. Um, but on the beach, it was just every day. It was cloudy. It was really a bummer. Um, we still, I mean, we enjoyed ourselves a lot on the Oregon coast. But uh, I just never forget. It's like every single day it was cloudy, even in the summer. And uh, so especially when you're doing photography and all that stuff, you always want to get those big, beautiful blue days that really capture some good photography. And we didn't get one. And it was <laughs> I'll just never forget that. And uh, it was nice to be in the cooler weather because when we did go back inland again, we're going, whoa, didn't realize that, you know, uh, what a difference it makes when you're on the coast. So, yeah, uh, lesson learned. Of course, if you watch Nomadic Fanatic when it was at the ocean shores there, and of course it was windy and cloudy. But that's typically what ocean shores was like. We uh, uh, enjoyed the time uh, that we had our stores there. Uh, people that we sold the store to ran the store for another 10 or 12 years after we sold it to them. And then they finally uh, went out of business. It's the, the kite industry just kind of lacked off. And uh, it's really tough to own a business there in Ocean Shores because it's so seasonal. And uh, those folks have long gone into different careers and stuff like that. But uh, interesting time in our lives. Uh, it was a great learning experience. I didn't get rich and... Uh, but I, it was a great experience to own a chain of kite stores. Our main store was in Kent, Washington, and we had one in Everett and Bellingham uh, in the two malls up there. And I uh, uh, sold them off back in 94, 95, something like that. And it was kind of like walking away from a burning building. <laughs> you know, yeah, you walk away, push the button, watch everything explode behind you. That was kind of what it was like. But what a great experience it was for me and learned a lot about business and inventory control and, and stores and all that kind of stuff. And I realized I'll never want a retail store again in my entire life. <laughs> but yeah, it was a, a, just a time in our lives that we had a chance. Uh, you know, uh, I worked for an aerospace company during the time I got laid off and that was kind of the time to create the stores and kind of filled that gap. And when it all didn't kind of work out after a few years, I, I was able to actually go back to the aerospace company and actually started another business after that doing uh, annexations for Washington State and, and working for an aerospace company. It was crazy days, but made lots of money and kind of recovered well. And, and uh, had a lot more energy back then. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to look back and you go, man, how did I have energy to do all that stuff? And uh, But then people say, how do I keep up with all the things I got now? So I guess things haven't changed that much. Well, I guess it's about time where I do a little bit of uh, sending messages out for shout outs. Um, you know, uh, our show, we talk about lifestyles and we talk about the gossip and stuff. It's kind of fun. But when we do interview our uh, folks from different channels, which we love to meet them, um, we always make sure we do a, a good interview to benefit your channel, to benefit what you're doing. Uh, it's always a pleasant experience and we always make sure it does. And so uh, just a reminder that if you have a channel and I know there's so many out there I still stumble across some. I go, well, I've never heard of these people. Anyway, but uh, or if you're a new channel or something like that and you're interested in t uh, to be interviewed and like to share your story, uh, you know, we got several ways we can do it. We can do it by phone. We can do it personal. We can do it by Skype. Uh, you can kind of pick out what you like to do. And then what we do is uh, uh, we can just do an interview on the phone, do the audio part and just add it to a regular show as a segment. Um, but we'll make sure and do shout outs for your channels and your Facebook and uh, whatever else you're doing. And uh, uh, we always love to hear what got you this in the first place. What was your battle plan? Uh, what are you doing for income? Uh, and of course, you know, uh, people are doing fundraising of one way or another, whether they're uh, affiliate marketing. Some of them are, you know, trying to build up their YouTube channels, especially ones that are fairly new, trying to build those numbers uh, to get their YouTube channel monetized. We understand how hard that could be. Um, so uh, yeah, we we'd be happy to help and participate. Um, 
Yeah. So uh, the best way to contact me by email is uh, rob at rvtalkradio.com. Or you can go to our Facebook page and, and contact us through the messaging there. And we'll try to get back with you as timely as possible. And uh, trying to make the experience a good one for you. Uh, yeah. And we we get a kick. And, you know, we always ask the same questions that everybody always has. Like, how do you how did you do this? How did you prepare? What did you buy? How did you buy it? Um, uh, what are you doing for income? That's always the big question. Um, what kind of uh, uh, learning lessons have you had so far? If you've been in it for a while, they always say, you know, what's some, you know, what's some of the common issues that come up? Uh, what's some of the observations out there during boondocking, security, safety, uh, all those kind of things? We uh, we're curious too, and. Uh, we get, you know, everybody gets kind of tired of the same old channels all the time. Sometimes it's always nice to get a new breath of fresh air of somebody new and different. So, yeah, give us a holler at RV Talk Radio. We have a Facebook page. Just message us, um, and we'll try to get back to you as quick as possible. We have a lot of pages. Sometimes we don't see the messages for a while. The best way is to email me at rob at rvtalkradio.com, and uh, we'll probably be able to respond to you quite quickly. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to mention to all the channels out there that are trying to raise money, which I know we tease you about it, but um, is, you know, you always hear us talking about the uh, Ranger Rob poopy bags. If you'd like to do a review uh, on the poopy bags and you have a pet and uh, we'll do a review video for us, we'll you know, obviously send you some and uh, you can uh, use your affiliate link and actually get a commission for selling Range of Rob poopy bags on your channel. So uh, I am so much for that because I want people picking up after their pets and I want to make it easy and I want to give them a good tool that works well. Our poopy bags have handles, they're big, large, strong, uh, lemon scented. They're just really good poopy bags and that's why I developed them is because of all these places I go where people will not pick up after their dogs. And they got to do it. You just have to. So if you got to do it, at least make sure you're using a bag that's worthwhile. These ones that are at the parks and all that stuff, they don't have handles and stuff like that. They're hard to turn inside out, hard to turn tie into a knot. Not with our bags. It's totally different. So uh, they're worth having. You can get them on sheets or you can get them on rolls. And we also have a new fabric dispenser out there. So they're on Amazon. Just type in Ranger Rob Poopy Bags and you'll find them. And uh, if you're interested in doing a review, we'd love to work with you um, where you can do a review and we'll give you a, a, a set to play with and uh, for free. And uh, all we ask is you do a review on them and put a Amazon, um, you know, and so you can continue to make money even after that by putting your affiliate link in the description. So uh, there you go. There's an opportunity. We, we, uh, uh, Love to see channels that are doing constructive kind of videos and showing where they're at and all that kind of stuff. And of course, they are. Uh, uh, some of them are financially already set, but they also will do things to make a little extra money. Like us, when you make an extra 20 bucks, 50 bucks, or something like that somewhere, um, it's always just nice for us. It's not essential. And we love to see other channels do that too, where they uh, make a few extra bucks just out of gratitude. They feel like they work for it a little bit. And uh, you're helping what I think is a good product for the environment. And uh, of course, our bags, by the way, are eco friendly. They do break down in, in landfills. And so we actually have a set of Ranger Rob poopy bags sitting out in the weather. They've actually been out in the weather for over a month now, and they're already breaking down. So that's amazing. Um, I'm really happy about that. So we're actually documenting that. We'll have a video out of that in a few months when we uh, have you know, all the results for people to see that how they're actually breaking down. So uh, yeah, um, so great way to make some extra money. Um, yeah, just uh, uh, let us know if you're interested. Just contact us and uh, we'll uh, work with you to find a way to do it. Also changing the subject quite quickly. Um, I, uh, actually just got contacted by somebody I haven't talked to in a long time. And some of you might remember him, some of you won't, but it's called Blacktop Boondocker, I believe is what he calls this channel. And, uh, I haven't talked to him in a long time. 
he, uh, I, I get a kick out of back in the day, we were all doing live feeds and uh, hangouts and stuff like that. And I think uh, after a while, you kind of realize just how silly and goofy things get and it gets out of control. And uh, so he, he's kind of leveled out his stuff just like we did, uh, just more just his thing, my thing, whatever. And uh, he's always had a pleasant channel. He doesn't live in his RV, uh, but when he does do RV videos, they're very constructive. Like right now, he's going through the process of uh, wa waxing his uh, RV and doing some really nice videos on that. So I urge you, go check out Blacktop Boondocker. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to his channel, you should. He uh, When he does videos, they're really good and uh, very informative. Uh, down to earth and uh, you'll learn uh, you'll learn things from him no doubt so that was a good thing the other thing I got to thinking what is one of the products that we use that we've used when we're RVing and still use even beyond RVing and it just and I got reminded of that because I was uh, checking out a video from Herbert's Travels and uh, he was talking about his Vier uh, uh, tire pressure gauge and I've got one a gauge pump <clears throat> and I got one too we got one many years ago and I gotta tell you that has been the best pump ever uh, we have used it when I just before I sold the boat I just got done reload uh, and it had a triaxle on it did all the tires on that did it a couple times with that boat and uh, had it when we had our <laughs> one of our videos if you looked at when we had a tire explode up over by las vegas and had to pull the spare down the spare was kind of low and and then right in the middle of nowhere i was able to get the air pressure up on that spare tire uh with no problem and it was so nice to have that vi air i like the vi air because it's built durable easy to use has a pressure gauge on it has exceptionally long cords not only the cord that goes to the battery but the cord that's attached to it so when you uh, you don't have to for example your truck the front of the truck is pretty far away from the tires in the back of your rv everything reached just fine because of the long cords they put on them yeah it's pain in the neck to pull all the way because you got a lot of cords there but let me tell you you'll be darn glad you had them if you have a um a, tire issue in the middle of nowhere and you and uh, the only way you can pump it up is to connect to your car battery so yeah um, the Vier um, pump I'll put a link in our description uh, uh, if you want if you haven't gotten a tire pump yet the Vier I tell you I've worked mine to death I mean really worked it where you have so hot you could hardly touch the thing um, uh, and it's performed well every single time. And uh, they're a little bit pricier than your normal kind of plastic ones and stuff. I'm telling you, it's worth every penny. So, yeah, the Vier pressure, uh, pressure pump. Um, great stuff. You'll like it. So we're changing the subject one more time and uh, moving on to another channel, His and Her Alaska. Uh, I don't know if they call themselves Alaska anymore, but they just put out a video and I put links to everything I'm talking about down below in the description of uh, their time that they spend down in Baja, Mexico. And the reason I kind of want to make sure I put a shout out for is, is uh, Sherry and I, uh, we have an interest of checking that out, maybe even retiring, maybe uh, might be the way to go. Plus, uh, you know, there's we're all getting kind of tired of the politics and problems and stuff. And, you know, every place, there's no perfect place to go. And then also, if you get into a fixed income uh, in your older age, uh, as far as uh, pensions and Social Securities, uh, your money could go a lot farther uh, in a place like that. So it's food for thought. And so they just put out a great re uh, 15 tips video of uh, going down to Baja, California, they call it. And uh, it's really good. I, uh, I I sat through the whole thing. And they're partnered up with a couple other channels, not familiar with the channels that much, but they do a very good review of safety, um, concerns, and mishaps, and 
misconceptions and a whole works about going to uh uh, going through the different things that, you know, you're going into another country and bottom line is, you know, you follow the rules, you're in good shape. And two, they do things different there and just throw away what you know as being an American and go with the flow and follow their rules. And uh, the one thing that they mention, and I have heard this time and time again, is there's a lot more freedom. And you say, how can that be, Rob? Well, <sighs> If you go somewhere like a national park, you can go here, but you can't go there. And you can go there, but you can't go there. And uh, there's railings and there's everything. In in Mexico, there's no railings. There's no nothing. If you fall off the cliff, it's like, well, guess you shouldn't have fell off the cliff, huh? So, uh, yeah, life's a little more. Uh, you're accountable for yourself. That's really the best word. Uh, Mexico is got that kind of freedom and we used to have that as kids and how many times have you heard people at my age going I don't know how I survived as a kid because <laughs> we didn't have all these rules and regulations like you guys we didn't have seat belts we didn't uh, we had them but we never used them we rode in the back of pickups all those kind of things and Mexico you have freedom uh, to make good or bad decisions <laughs> All by yourself. How about that? Hard to can, um, and that's something we need as Americans need to learn again is to be accountable for ourselves, even when it comes to like language and things like that. If you, something offends you, you turn the channel. You don't complain. Um, and same thing too. If you're going to do activities, you use common sense and safety, and uh, you'll be fine. And uh, uh, yeah, and they did a really good job about reviewing like what you would need for like insurances and for vehicles, for your own personal. Uh, had a really good uh, uh, suggestion to make sure that you have, uh, uh, we call it, transport insurance too in case you're hurt and you need to be airlifted or something like that. Uh, all that stuff is really good common sense. It was one of the best videos I've seen in a while. So I highly recommend His and Her Alaska. I put the link in the description. Uh, go check out their channel. If you haven't subscribed to them, uh, obviously, please do. Um, but yeah, uh, good video. And uh, I'm hoping to go down there sometime. It would be really neat to coordinate my trip um, when they're down there so I could uh, learn the ropes a little faster. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of things about that, and they've been going down there for a lifetime, it sounds like. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, His and Her Alaska. Check them out. Check the link below. You'll be happy you did. Okay, now for my final channel I'm going to cover today. is called Enjoy the Journey of Life, which uh, is a fairly new channel. been watching them. Um, I think they're doing a pretty good job. They uh, uh, They just did a review that, they probably revealed probably more than they're really supposed to uh, about the YouTube channel and monetization and how much money you can make. And uh, it was fun to watch. It was interesting to see their numbers. But uh, if you're thinking about traveling and setting up a YouTube channel and getting monetized, this video is pretty informative of like what it takes to get started and uh, kind of telling you how it can grow. And actually the potential income you can make if you actually have a sh show they do uh, uh, appear to put good time into their videos and they're uh, well done and uh, they're a pleasant couple and uh, uh, I think they'll grow a lot I think they're up to about 32,000 subscribers now and and if you have a, sh a channel that's got a niche where um, for example, like when we were RV Travel Buddy, same channel, we changed it to the Outdoor Travel Channel. Our tra our our channel is just growing like crazy. Every I mean, just because we were consistent with the same kind of story it was about RV travel and the whole works. Well, as we settled down, we had to kind of change our subject matter a little bit, and that's why we changed the name to Outdoor Travel Channel because we weren't doing so much nichey stuff and. Uh, but if you know that you're going to be pretty focused on your niche uh, or niche, they'll call it sometimes, uh, channels like that do really well. And then uh, once you got that and then you do some persistent uh, techniques with your thumbnails and your, uh, you know, making sure your sound is good, make sure your cameras 
uh, pictures you're doing are pretty stable and, and invest some money. You, got, you know, I don't care what you say, what kind of business you say, no matter what kind of business you get into, it takes money to make money. So to invest in a decent camera, some decent um, microphones, uh, you know, it's a lot of money. But as you can see, when you watch their video, you'll see that it can pay off. And so uh, I did once again put a link in the description below uh, of their videos. And so I, I want to prove to you on RV Talk Radio, we don't bash everybody we hear about. Uh, there's some great stuff out there. Um, our biggest thing is making sure people understand the realities of what's going on. Um, sometimes you don't always know exactly how these guys are paying for this kind of stuff. And you may not have the same resources they do. Um, and uh, for example, I just scratch my head and watch like his and hers Alaska. And first question I go is how do they pay for all this stuff? Especially if they got a home up in Alaska. Uh, he seems a little younger than me. He's like, where's his, where's the money? Is it just from, I mean, they uh, must run a pretty tight budget. <laughs> That's all I can say. But there may be things I don't know about. But uh, it does mystify me. So it is nice when channels like that give you some ideas of how they're pulling it off. And by the way, it may not be as glamorous as you think. They may be really running on some tight budgets. And you say, well, you know, you look at some of the rigs they've got and, and equipment they got, you know there's some money involved in that. And so, uh, uh, you know, they may be running pretty tight budgets every month and living paycheck to paycheck, um, which, you know, who doesn't? <laughs> so, but... Uh, yeah, I can't help but sometimes go, how do they afford to do what they're doing? And, uh, of course, you know, that's why I kind of like, uh, I don't mind funding a, I've talked about this before, like I, I donate to SV Delos. Only because the content that they produce is just amazing. And some of these other channels are actually producing some pretty good content, including uh, Nomadic Fanatic. And uh, when they do a good job at it and stuff, then you kind of feel like, all right, I'll buy one of their stickers or maybe I will uh, uh, click on one of their links or something like that. Or maybe just give them an all-out great uh, donation through their PayPal uh, or, pay, or become a patron. Um, that's when it feels good to, that you feel like you're getting something back and you're not just funding their screwing off because <laughs> you know they're working hard behind the scenes with the camera with editing the whole works and and, and buying good equipment and uh, uh, then it's a good trade-off I, I gotta admit but uh, then there's the other side of it of like people trying to sell the package to you some people will never do what they're doing and so when the channels understand that they're making content that somebody saying sitting in the office knows that that's not something they'll be able to do in the future. But for 15 minutes of their time at lunchtime can watch your video and feel involved, feel like they're part of your channel, part of your family. You feel like you're talking to them. Um, it's a pleasant experience for them and a pleasant experience, obviously, for the people who have got to monetize uh, uh, channel. And uh, when those channels understand that that's how it is, like I think SV Delos, because they're sailing, most people will never do that. Uh, just the fact that we can watch someone who's traveling all over the world in a sailboat, I know Sherry and I will never do that, but for our 15, 20 minutes of watching their video once a week uh, gives us great pleasure, and it's neat to see these islands and Caribbean and different countries that they go to and the, what they're up, you know, uh, their situations and fun and hikes and they do great photography and whole works. It feels like you're getting something in return. That's a great scenario. Some channels get it. Uh, I've never really had a beef with uh, his and her Alaska. They've always seemed to be very informative. I still scratch my head like of amazement sometimes, but of how they do what they do. But, you know, and then uh, occasionally uh, because of them, I'll actually find other channels that some ways and I have never heard of in my life. 
and I'll make sure and go over and subscribe and watch those channels and see if they're consistent with making good content just like his and her Alaska. And so these other guys, uh, the new folks that I was just talking about, uh, I can't, what did I say the name was? Enjoy the Journey uh, Life uh, channel. Uh, I think I like their channel. I'm not sure yet. Um, sometimes when you're watching them, you can kind of tell they're just doing a performance and not just naturally talking to the camera, which I probably do that too much and need to get more professional. But sometimes when I watch their channels, like, all right, these guys are just trying to set up a good show to boost their views and boost whatever they're trying to sell. You kind of feel it a little bit in that channel where other ones are just kind of like, they're just doing it naturally. And so uh, I'll watch them for a while, see how it goes. And uh, I, I hope all of them uh, the best. And obviously every time people produce videos, the better they probably get back, get at it. And, uh, uh but yeah, he he was. These guys were really good about showing their analytics for YouTube's, which I'm not sure they really like you doing that. But it's good to show people that um, there is potential out there for a pretty decent income with a good channel and a good niche. And uh, uh, you know, I can only wish sometimes that we had the niche that we could go back to. But uh, right now, it's like. Uh, uh, our time will come and then we'll be able to boost our channel up too. So, but for those, uh, you know, you're going to be focused on your one subject. Uh, uh, you'll go, you'll go far. And, uh, anyway, uh, there you go. So down in the description below, all the things we talked about in this show are in there. Go check out these different channels. Please make sure you subscribe, especially if we're giving them a big thumbs up. They're definitely good channels. I, I promise you. Well, we've had a pretty good journey through all kinds of stuff today on this show, <laughs> and uh, uh, some good, some bad, and some uh, very exciting. I think one of the biggest conclusions I've been able to get is if there's young folks trying to get away from the hustle bustle, and they don't want to do the corporate thing, and they don't want to get into the mortgage thing, and yet have some kind of skill and also avoiding debt, which is uh, probably the best thing I can see about folks that are trying to do this RV lifestyle. If, if they can actually pull this off and uh, create some kind of income and avoid debt, and of course, you know, we're all, all guilty of debt. I've got a mortgage and uh, yeah, so uh, kind of a way of life, but if that's not for you, uh, then this lifestyle is probably a good one for younger uh, people. Uh, those that are retiring, while well, you have time to prepare. And uh, of course, trying not to be in debt or having all debts paid off. Um, maybe you're finding a way to enjoy life at the fullest with a fixed income because you don't have a regular paycheck anymore. Uh, this life is probably for you too. I uh, I worry only about those who think it's an easy way out of life. Uh, those concern me. Um, and dropping their lifestyle standards so low that, you know, uh, pooping in a bucket is the way to go out of living in a van is the ideal lifestyle. Uh, I, I think you should sh shoot a little higher. <laughs> Just say it. But uh, all in all, um, there's a lot of circumstances where people are doing what they're doing because they are in a fixed income from years ago or a disability and really the money is really low and they just cannot survive in a house or apartment or rent in the cities and stuff. Uh, some of this uh, kind of lifestyle works well and allows them to be part of a community and uh have purpose in life instead of just sitting around moping trying to figure out how you're going to buy groceries. So uh, that's kind of summering it all up. Uh, it was exa you know, there's uh, exceptions to everything, of course. Uh, sometimes I look at all these channels, I go, gosh, I wish I was out there again. But uh, it's kind of funny. It's Be careful. You, know, you always think the grass is greener on the other side. I just know that when we got out there, we uh, 
it was fun at first, and then after a while, you kind of realize not, none of it's yours except your RV. And uh, if you're okay with that, uh, great. The other thing is, is, is everything's changing. I mean, just like I was talking earlier in the show with nomadic fanatics talking about ocean shores, some of the things we got to do at ocean shores just five years ago, not to mention I had a store that I used to know what ocean shores was really like. Uh, it's no longer everything's uh, more rules, more uh, conditions, more cost. And uh, it's sad um, to watch our freedoms go. That's one of the things I was saying about Mexico is there's more freedom there because you're accountable for yourself. And the Americans are just so much like, protect me from this and car seats and railings and all these things. And, and uh, uh, which I certainly understand how they came to be. Uh, even in our schools, our kids are so coddled now that they <laughs> I don't know how they handle being adults uh, because of less freedom. We got a helicopter parent, everybody and helicopter all, everybody <laughs> and it's like it's just gotta stop but uh yeah um i highly recommend if you can do the rv lifestyle uh great but just make sure you give yourself a good foundation be realistic understand times are changing things are harder if you're watching older videos a lot of things they're talking about then is not necessarily true today we have a grow, growing homeless population that's invading a little bit of our public lands and stuff, and uh, it's sad. Um, we need our government to do a better job at, if we're going to set up government programs that they actually work. Uh, those people, they need a place to live, and that's that's the problem. We need, And, of course, they have issues, too, and we need to give them programs to be successful. Uh, Rhode Island, I hear, has a pretty good program for folks and also dealing with drug issues and mental issues that uh, really seem to be working well. And uh, anyway, but we don't seem to be getting it out here over in the West Coast. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show today. I'm grateful that you uh, were with us. Uh, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, catch us on Spreaker. And, uh, of course, we're on iTunes and iHeartRadio and also syndicated on Good Talk Radio, which we own, which we play at different times of days and stuff. So you, all you have to do is go to goodtalkradio.com, look at the schedule, and you can catch other episodes of RV Talk Radio. So, uh, once again, if you're interested in being interviewed or like to be on the show, uh, give us a holler. Uh, use the email rob at rvtalkradio.com and uh, tell us what's on your mind. So, once again, thank you. Be grateful. We'll talk to you next time. Bye now. Thank you for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. Then go down to the description and think about becoming a member of our Patreon. This will allow you to get special content just for you and help us build future content. Thank you.